Nigeria is facing an unprecedented security challenge that has stretched the country's security forces. From Boko Haram jihadists in the country's northeast, banditry in its northwest, separatist militants in its southeast, and communal clashes in the central region, Nigeria's security forces are struggling to maintain peace in a country that is not at war. In today's continuing series on Nigeria kidnappings, CGTN's Deji Badmas reports. The country's security forces have not faced the kind of security challenges they're dealing with at the moment. The Nigerian military is currently carrying out military operations in nearly every region of the country, stretching its less than 200,000 troops to the limit. This is in addition to the protracted counterinsurgency war against jihadist groups like Boko Haram and ISWAP, a campaign that has been going on since 2009. Areas where the police are supposed to curtail the police should be, you know, uh, should be deployed to address such security threats. You look at banditry, kidnapping, rape, armed robbery, and what have you. These are within the core competence of the Nigerian police. There's no reason involving the military. Where we should uh, deploy the military should be with regards to terrorism, threats to national security. But as we speak, we have deployed the military to every act of criminality in this society, and so the military is overstretched. What is the police doing? Where is the Nigerian police in, the, in all this? It's estimated that the Nigerian police has about 320,000 personnel, but a substantial part of that number are used for VIP security services, further straining the force. What needs to happen is the subnationals need to get involved. The state governments need to be empowered to get their own local police in, because if you police every level, police every local government, police every state, then it's easy for the military to come in as a response force, as people with superior firepower. Because after all, terrorists, we know the way they operate. Um, they conduct surveillance, they get uh, their material together before they strike. So this can be detected and this can even be converted at a, uh, combated at a local level. Overstressed, and not well equipped, especially for guerrilla warfare, the Nigerian military has struggled to end the Boko Haram insurgency in the northeast of the country. The violence has left an estimated 20,000 people dead and at least 2 million people displaced since 2009. With banditry and militant secessionists coming into the mix, the military is further challenged. But the authorities say government troops are making progress in dealing with the crisis. In terms of the insurgency in the northeast, we have been able to take out a lot of the insurgents. I know from the top of my head, from March of last year to December of last year, the military was able to take out 2,403 insurgents, but not everybody knows that. The military was able to free 864 kidnap victims. Nobody really knows or feels that because you can only relate to what is happening in your own situation. There have been calls on the government to seek help by engaging mercenaries to take on the insurgents, something the previous government of the country did. But the president has flatly rejected the idea. We have the resources. It's just misapplication or underutilization that has affected our ability to deal with these people. And um, the president has given a new uh, lease of life to the armed forces, and I believe that we should be able to overcome these people without uh, resorting to help. The government expects to begin to take delivery of Super Tucano fighter jets from the United States in July. The Jets are expected to be a game changer in the country's counterinsurgency campaign. Plans are also underway to increase the military budget and recruit more troops. We need to rejig re our security architecture. Areas where we know the police have confidence, let us equip them. Let us provide the wherewithal for them to do their job. And, you know, like they say, to whom much is given, much is expected. Even if the police are fully equipped, to do their job, then they have no reason you know, not to live up to the billing. And again, the government at every point in time must engage with the citizens, such that the citizenry will become partners in policing. I will not see policing of the country 
or uh, curtailing threats to national security as the responsibility of only the government. They must recognize that the survival of the government or the survival of the states is also their individual survival. Nigeria's new police chief has pledged to reform the force, make it a more functional one. How soon that happens could make the difference in tackling Nigeria's security challenges. Dejibadmo, CGTN, Lagos, Nigeria. Well, let's get yet more insights into the security situation in the country. We're now joined by Dennis Amakri, who is a security consultant and former Nigerian intelligence officer based in Lagos, Nigeria. Dennis, how big, looking at this in more detail, how big a security challenge are abductions and kidnappings in Nigeria? Uh, thank you very much for having me. Um, well, it is a, a big pro problem for Nigeria. Uh, really a plethora of problems happening across the country. And uh, it, I think we cannot overcome this uh, spate of kidnapping and abductions because of the way we are approaching it. Uh, there is no unified or systematic approach in dealing with it. I can tell you for over 10 years that uh, we've been dealing with this, uh, there is no um, uh, anti-kidnapping plan or, you know, a plan against kidnapping that they have. Uh, the, 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 the police does not have one. Uh, the military uh, is not designed to do that. And then, of course, the security, other security agencies are there, but I don't know if they are working in synergy to uh, face this particular problem. So, Dennis, I guess the question is, does the Nigerian government have a strategy to deal with abductions, kidnapping, and banditry, and is it working? If not, then, how can the government go about this? Uh, well, there is no strategy right now, uh, as far as I'm concerned. Uh, what happens is that um, when there is a kidnap, um, the scent is just like a fire brigade thing, uh, whereby they have to send people to go, uh, policemen from the Inspector General and Response Team, which is a very small team, uh, going around looking for uh, hostages. And I think that does not work very well. They've had some successes, but uh, it does not work. Uh, number one, we have to have a national policy on zero tolerance on payment of ransom because I believe strongly that um, kidnapping continues in Nigeria because uh, people are paying, including the government of Nigeria. So when you pay ransom, you strengthen them and they go back and then get some more money, do what they have to do and come back at you again. So there must be zero, zero tolerance and there must be systematic uh, approach to it. That is, if people are kidnapped, also go out and look for them. Don't wait for just them to call you and then you start to negotiate. And of course, we have to remember one thing. The, who are the targets? The targets are school children, schools. The schools initiative, the security of schools initiative is not uh, being um, uh, operative. So you have to keep your schools safe. Because if you just pay a ransom and then they go to another school that is just uh, open there for them to come and take the children. So there must be a systematic approach to dealing with this. No ransom payment. Strengthening the security system whereby it will be difficult because we have a low risk, high yield crime. And then what all we have to do is to raise the risk of kidnapping and then of course uh, look at uh, uh, the yield which is uh, the money is not coming in. Dennis Amakri thank you very much for speaking to us on Africa Live. Security consultant Dennis Amakri joining us live there from Lagos, Nigeria.